time. I have two big passions in my life, coffee, but also music. And I've always seen the world through a musical lens. And as a result, I look at coffee just a little bit different. Today, it's my privilege to showcase a blend of two Colombian coffees. Some geisha from Cerro Azul and some Omblegon from El Deviso. Each of these coffees are as memorable as a catchy melody. And together, they harmonize with wonderful complexity. Like music, like a song. But I didn't write this hit on my own. This banger is a product of collaboration with a talented and passionate team from all over the planet with whom I'd love to share this spotlight today. So let me introduce you to the superstar producers. The Herrera family have cultivated optimal conditions that allow the natural talent of the Colombian geisha to just sing. In my blend, I've chosen a geisha that has this high quality hibiscus and sweet citrus note. These flavors were developed during a hybrid processing technique with one day natural drying as whole cherry, depulping, two days washed processing, and six days mechanical drying. And just around the corner, more superstars, the Lasso brothers at El Deviso. Their signature producing style revolves around innovative technology, tools, and instruments. In my blend, I've chosen their appropriately named lot, the Floral Symphony, for its magical florals and its distinct cherry sweetness. These flavors were developed during a 200-hour anaerobic fermentation in a state-of-the-art bioreactor and locked in over 40 hours in a hermetically sealed drying table. So at 10 grams from the Lasso brothers, in collaboration with 8.7 grams from the Herrera family, we find this new vanilla note and we find harmony. The song is written, and the team at Code Black Coffee, we are the band, and we love to play. During the roasting process, we will carefully track key sensory milestones, allowing each of these coffees to signal their own arrival at their sweetest point. Both of these coffees were roasted 30 hours ago on an L100 Plus by Roast, amplifying the flavor. And now the stage is set. My role is to carefully mix these coffees together master the brewing variables, and then perform this song. And I'd like to dedicate this song today to all the passionate coffee people of the world, like you, judges, but also all the audience here today and those watching at home. This song goes out to all of you. My recipe is one part of my coffee blend and 16 parts of coffee brewing water by Aquacode. This ratio allows me to present a balanced intensity of flavor. My water is 85 ppm, magnesium heavy, and balanced with equal parts potassium and sodium, which brings bright orange and red fruits to the cup. 18.7 grams of coffee, 300 grams of water, over three pours through the Hario Drip Assist. My first pour is 50 grams at 95 degrees Celsius. This is the bloom, responsible for the evenness of the extraction. I'll start each pour by pouring in the inner ring of the drip assist. This features larger holes that drip at eight grams per second, quickly saturating my coffee bed. Once saturated, I'll pour into the outer ring of the drip assist that features smaller holes that drip at four grams per second. This will maintain the height of my brew bed and control the agitation, resulting in high repeatability. My second pour is 150 grams with both my kettles at 95 degrees Celsius and 85 degrees Celsius. The drip assist will catch and blend the waters from both my kettles, stabilizing a cooler temperature before dripping to the coffee below. This pour extracts the dominant flavors and the sweetness. By decreasing the temperature of subsequent pours, I can importantly maintain the temperature of the coffee bed, extracting a cherry sweetness and a juicy mouthfeel. And my final pour will be 100 grams at 85 degrees Celsius. This will fine tune a long and lingering aftertaste.
As a brewer and a musician, I'm always looking for the best instruments. So today I ground my coffee on an EG1 grinder by Weber Workshops. This grinder has excellent grind uniformity, resulting in higher clarity cups. And I've used the fellow EKG kettles today to control the flow rate before the drip assist. This is particularly important for that second pour when I am blending both of my kettles for consistency and control. I have custom made and 3D printed a stabilization ring for the drip assist. This is for ease of use with my favorite brewer, the V60. V60's conical shape offers different levels of extraction resulting in higher complexity in the cup. And vibrant acidities are preserved when hot and warm and even elevated on cooling thanks to metal's excellent thermal conductivity. My carafes and my mugs today are designed in a way to be comfortable and familiar while concentrating the aroma towards your nose. Now, speaking of aroma, it's time for some descriptors. Judges, in the aroma today, we will find medium, hibiscus, vanilla, cherry, and blood orange. Please make three separate assessments, swirling each and every time before lifting to your nose. Thanks. Cheers. Thank you. Judges, for all further assessments, please drink directly from the mug at the end of my presentation. For the flavor descriptors, when hot, we find hibiscus, vanilla, cherry, and blood orange. While warm and cool, red grapes, and stone fruit like apricot. The aftertaste is long and lingering with cherry and hibiscus. When warm and cool, that hibiscus will transition into a hibiscus tea. The acidity is, begins medium and shifts towards medium high, while hot citric like mandarin. When warm and cool, Malic, tartaric, and citric. Like cherries. The sweetness is medium. Like cherry. Honey. Peach and apricot. The mouthfeel is medium. When hot, coating, and juicy. When warm and cool, juicy with refined drying, like hibiscus tea. Judges, this cup, or this song, is only possible through collaboration. The melodies were crafted by the superstar producers, the Herrera family from Cerro Azul, and the Lasso brothers from El Deviso. They were amplified by the band, us, the team at Code Black Coffee. And it's been my privilege and my pleasure to mix, master, and perform this song for you today. Please begin your assessment. That's my time. Give it up for the barista uh, brewer's champion representing Australia. All right, welcome back. We are here to ask Tom some questions because I don't know about you, but I have so many. But before we start, Tom, just first impressions, how are you feeling right now? Saying to Pat that I feel like as soon as I said time, I was just like, I'm on the exact same level. Like it's just maintaining. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling really good. I feel like I'm in, yeah, I'm in the zone right now. <laughs> Yeah. Your, your performance looked incredible. Like oh, Andy and I had goosebumps several times and we yes. have 
quite a few questions. Sure. Yes, I mean, just I want to start with the music. I mean, I know we got to talk coffee, but what I loved is you uh, you brought it to music. So my first question to you is: Are you the band leader, and what instrument do you play? How right. big is this band? I mean, the look band. at us. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty big band. Yes, like, sir. I mean, the metaphor that I want to get across is: you know, I have. It's not just me. There are hundreds and hundreds of people. You know, that are the reason why this coffee tastes so good. So, what instrument do I play? I mean, I'm. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I mix the coffees, I master the brewing variables, and I perform it, but I can't do that without Absolutely. my backing band and my producers. And, yeah. You're like the David Guetta of coffee. <laughs> no, uh, these guys are the David Guetta of coffee. The, okay, yeah. so tell us, because I'm surrounded by some very impressive men. Thank do you. you do, a, do you want to do a... <laughs> Do you want to do a quick introduction? Who, oh, do you, sure. who did we you bring? The, we have the Lasso brothers from El Diviso, and we have Rico Berto um, from, uh, from Cerro Azul. Um, yeah, these are, these they are the... They produced your coffee, they right? They produced my yes. coffee. It was a blend of two coffees, so um, yeah, it was a, almost an even one part to one part blend, almost. Can you, because maybe someone is just tuning in, um, remind us of the coffees that you used. Sure, so I use a washed hybrid geisha from Cerro Azul, and I used a uh, anaerobic fermented omblagon from El Diviso, um, mixed together. Um, yeah, 10 grams of one, 8.7 of the other. Yeah. And how did you come up with like this combination, these coffees? Can you tell us a little bit about like your coffee journey to here? Sure. Um, at Co Black, we're always looking for a hook. We're always looking for yummy coffees, um, you know, that are really high quality, but also have something that people haven't experienced before. Um, particularly in, yeah, in our top shelf range and you know, working with these guys, like it's, it's at that top caliber. You know? um, so we're fortunate enough to have access to wonderful coffees um, and just tasting the, you know, the harvests every year and the, there's certain lots that stand out. Um, and we like being playful as well. So playing with different coffees, trying new brewing methods eventually. Um, yeah, we, we, got, we got to where we got to, yeah. So if we were going to call this coffee uh, a genre, where does this coffee live? Is this a funk? Are we talking Bootsy Collins? Is this a rap album? Is this an indie rock album? Where are we at? Yeah, I think um, <laughs> uh, each of us would have a different response. But, you know, the profile of this coffee, it's, it's got a lot to say. You know, um, it's, it's intense, but it's clean. Um, so it will be a genre that is loud vocals. Good percussion. Somewhere between what? Maybe it's like hip hop, like '90s hip hop. Okay, ooh, yeah. '90s hip hop. Shout <laughs> out, baby. I love '90s hip hop. So I want to transition over here, Patrick. You're a coach. Tell me about your emotions coaching this week. This week has been interesting. Every day we were preparing for the competition that we had on that day, with the understanding if we make it through, if we're lucky, we will practice that that night. So there was a lot of highs leading in, and then we got there on the day, felt so excited and elated, and then Keith kept getting through. So we kept going and staying up till two, sorting coffee, eating coffee, <laughs> 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 roasting I coffee, and uh, yeah, right now it's yeah feeling that elation now. He might be still riding it, but I'm, I'm forward. <laughs> You're good? Enjoy. <laughs> he still has to brew us coffee, so he better be on, I'll you know what I mean? Soon, yeah. Um, I'd actually like to ask a question because we got a couple of questions in the live stream um, and one of the questions was about the two kettle technique which I think is so impressive. Um, so the question that someone asked on the live stream was why are two kettles with different temperatures together? Like is that better than to use a third kettle with a different temperature? Sure. Like, tell us about that well, technique. First of all, we can't use three kettles in this competition. So that's um, a rule. So that's a rule I didn't want to break. Um, I love rules. Um, <laughs> but, you know, when we do pour over usually with one kettle, um, it will lose temperature as you go throughout your pours, particularly if you're doing f three, four, five pours. And so you lose up to four or five degrees in your kettle generally. So the theory behind it is, excuse me, the Hopefully. theory behind it is that we can actually control with more precision that uh, those middle pours by blending a kettle that is actually set you know, at a temperature rather than relying on uh, the environment or anything else around. So in fact, it gives us more control. Um, and the drip assist stabilizes and creates like a pool, a reservoir of water 
that so that water will yeah, stabilize in between the two temperatures. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to have to try this at home. Amy, I'm getting two kettles. Uh, I want to talk to our producers here a little bit. What does it mean to you guys to have your coffee here on the world stage in this partnership here with Tom? Bueno, yo pienso que es el trabajo y el esfuerzo de cada uno buscando siempre dar lo mejor para que ellos eh, brillen igual que nosotros en el mundo del café. Uh, he just saying that is the effort and work that they put into into what they do, so the competitors can also shine in the world stage as they do. Yeah. Nestor, anything for me? Pues, eh, me siento muy feliz de, de estar aquí sentado, eh, felicitar a Tomás por ese gran trabajo. Eh, como siempre hemos dicho, esto es una, una cadena donde todos hacemos un aporte eh, y aportamos nuestros conocimientos y aparte de lo que sabemos es la pasión y el amor que nos enfocamos a nosotros procesar un café al tostador a la hora de tostar para que el café sea expresivo lo mejor y el gran trabajo de Tomás que es preparar una bebida espectacular y eso es lo que nos une eh, nosotros siempre nos identificamos con algo que le llamamos eh, familia y café porque somos una cadena y por más grande que sea el mundo siempre estas cosas son las que nos conectan y, y agradecer a todas las personas que, que hacemos parte de esta cadena y, y muchas gracias uh, sure, that was a lot. Yeah, that was a, lot. <laughs> a summary is uh, also okay. The summary okay. was actually a very beautiful sentence. Like uh, he calls it the coffee family, because every part and aspect of the coffee chain adds some value and knowledge. So he's extremely happy that he can add something. But congratulating Thomas uh, for the amazing uh, job that he did. And that is the one that brings it all together, pretty much like in the concept that he was mentioning about being a band. Absolutely, absolutely. Adrian, anything for you? Algo, algo más para decir? No, pues como reiterar lo que decía mi hermano, lo que decían. Eh, eso para nosotros como productores es algo que nos llena, que nos motiva a seguir trabajando y contento de, de ver que muchos competidores. Eh, utilizan nuestros cafés, cafés de Colombia que eh, quedan en el nombre alto de nuestro país y eso hace que nos motive a seguir haciendo cosas nuevas y esforzarnos por llevar los cafés a lo más alto. Sure. That, you was, got this. Uh, yeah. You were saying that uh, it's awesome to see the coffees that they produce here, that this gives lots of courage for them to keep doing. Uh, what they're doing to keep experiment, to keep uh, doing new things, and it's an honor to have Colombian coffee and like their coffees here at the world stage. Absolutely, not just the world stage, but the world finals. And there you of, go. Cheers. How do you say cheers, cheers you, in Tom. Australian? Uh, cheers. Cheers. Cheers, <laughs> guys. Salute. Cheers. Thank you. Salute. Thank you. Salute. 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 So tell us what we're tasting. Because um, I'm very sad for the people at home. I know. Sorry, still. So just just for the people watching and not sitting here, what are we tasting? Well, you're tasting. Um, you're going to be tasting beautiful hibiscus notes um, with dominant cherry flavors, um, a sweet citrus that we like into blood orange. Um, yeah, as well as uh, yeah, the sweetness is sweetness is kind of like honey, but very cherry dominant. Long and lingering hibiscus tea qualities as it cools down. Um, it's delicious. Um, ci the, ci uh, the citrus component is pretty strong. So, but as it cools, we notice uh, more different acidities dancing together. Like is it weird that I'm getting cherry? I know it's, it's no. cherry dominant. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, you got a flavor I'm doing note. It. I'm doing yes. it, everybody. I can taste coffee. <laughs> Isn't it great when you get a flavor note? Yes, I like. I'm sitting here a bunch amongst professionals. Like I this know. is the best moment of my life. That actually and reminds me. Um, that might be fun for people watching. Do you have one piece of advice for baristas watching? They see you here, like you've accomplished this position. You're sitting among these incredible people. Could you give a piece of advice to um, the people watching, the baristas that want to be like you? 
Sure. Um, I would say just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons and um, read the rules. Um, but yeah, just surround yourself with people who you trust because um, it's much, much easier when you're, when you're spending those late nights and all those long days um, with people who you love and trust. So yeah, that's probably my best advice. It's great advice. I mean, it's, you got to do it for the love. No matter what it is, you got to do it for the love. Yep. Um, a couple last questions. For me, I got to know what are the last three things that you've listened to, whether it be Spotify or Apple Music, however you listen to music. But if you're a music guy, I'm a music guy, what are the last three things that you've listened to? Um, last three pieces of music? Or just like bands, artists, maybe it's classical, sure. beef oven, I don't know. I mean, I, I listen to a lot of an artist called Jordan Rakai. He's like a, a lot of FKJ featured in my in my soundtrack today. Yes, um, that was funky, baby. I, that was funky. Yeah, I love, the, I love that sort of style of music. Um, Good. Yeah. All right. Um, is there any last thing you want to say, like uh, thank anyone other than the, the gentleman here? Like, is there anything else you want to say, like maybe to the to people sure. watching the live stream? This is your moment. Yeah, absolutely. Look, there's, there's so many, many people <laughs> um, that, I, that I have to thank. Um, a lot of them know who they are, but, you know, my family and friends, of course. Um, but even, even this, like the little, the little things, even at work, you know, some people who make our experience a little bit like easier to do what we got to what we got to do. Um, there's just so many people I couldn't even begin. But um, yeah, I, I don't want to start naming because I'll be here all all night. Okay. But, yeah. It was a it, it takes a village, right? Yeah, it, it takes a village. Right. Yeah. Community, as I like to say. Uh, well, thank you so much, Tom. This is thank so you. wonderful. Let's give it up for our representative from Australia. Thank you. Yes. Grazie.